day four on the CNC plasma table build. I've got the table here uh, welded out with uh, cold rolled steel rails on it and everything. Um, I'm missing a couple little details here. I forgot to put the cable track here on the side and I need to make some adjustable feet that uh, will go up and down so I can level this table once I get it in its final resting place over here. Um, but for now, I told you guys we build the water bed for the table and my ADD is jumping off really bad right now because for some reason all I want to do is play with the gantry and get it rolling up and down this table on here. But um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick to the plan and do this water bed. Let's get cracking into it. Instead of making you guys go through the prints here and the cut sheet, I went ahead and made a simplified version just so you guys can kind of see what we're hoping to end up with. This is the print here. This is the outline uh, of the water bed that's gonna sit on top of the table. And then there's this stringer down the middle. There's also two on each end with a bunch of little sections of angle. And uh, that's what holds the slats in place here. Because um, when you're cutting on plasma, uh, as the torch is running across the table, um, not only is it cutting the sheet that you want it to cut, but it's also cutting uh, what the sheet is setting on underneath the sheet, which is the waterbed. And that's what's actually gonna be the finished product contact surface. This waterbed is a measure against that to protect the table and to keep the uh, smoke and the dross down. Uh, the water catches the, a lot of the smoke and a lot of the dross. Uh, the other option is to use a downdraft table where you actually uh, plumb in like a big piece of ductwork underneath the table and then you hook up a big exhaust blower fan and you exhaust that outside of your shop. But that has some inherent issues with it. For ease of use, uh, I'm going with the water bed and I've got a buddy that has a table also. He's got a water bed, you know, just some good old fashioned anecdotal evidence. If it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing, right? So here's where we're at is we're gonna need a angle iron frame. So it's going to be made out of four by four angle iron. This is like a side view if you took this flat and rolled it up on its side. And uh, it's gonna be five foot six wide by 10 foot six long, which should leave me uh, some space here on this side of the table to hook up a CNC tube cutter eventually is the ultimate plan. So I'm gonna cut my tubes here. I need two at this length and I need two at five foot six. And these are the stringers that are gonna run lengthwise up and down the table and help support the slats. And I'm gonna need at least three of those per print. And if I have the extra material, I'm gonna go ahead and cut five of them. That way, I can not only have one down in the center here, but because it's a pretty large space, I'd like to have two more running the length of this just to help support all that material so I don't have to worry about putting a really thick, like one inch plate on here, which can weigh like a four by eight sheet of one inch, I think weighs in it a ton. So I'd really like this table to be able to support that if I can find that business. But uh, in the meantime here, uh, it's a one inch by two inch rectangle tube. Uh, we're gonna try and get five of those. And the slats on the edges and the bottom are actually captured between little pieces of angle that you stack next to each other and weld out and you just leave a little bit of, let's see, two hundredths, no, two tenths of an inch, so a little bit less than a quarter of an inch in between these to hold those slats in place. And you need 125 of those suckers for this size table. Uh, that's gonna take a minute to do. Then uh, three inch flat stock, this is what's actually gonna end up being the slats itself that run across the table. And those are gonna need to be five foot six inches long and I cut them, I'm really hoping this works out because I want these five foot six to fit inside of this five foot six table. But as you know, this angle iron right here has a material thickness. So a quarter inch material thickness here, a quarter inch material thickness there. I actually have physically five foot five and a half in between these for that slat to fit straight across. But I don't want the slats to fit straight across so I'm gonna go ahead and cut them a half inch large and hopefully that gives me a little bit of a bow. 
um, because any straight cuts that come across the table, if it happens to be on top of that slat, perfectly straight, and it's a straight slat, what it's gonna do is go ahead and tear up that whole slat perfectly underneath the sheet. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm putting a really slight radius on these slats in the hopes that if I go straight across a radius, I'm only gonna intersect it maybe here, and then again here, and just have two little cuts in that slat instead of tearing the whole thing up. So you see a lot of these tables, and most of them have a little bow in those slats. So a little detail, but it could really save you a lot of time and help you be more efficient. So that's what we're after. There's our cut list. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the saw and my little cut station, and we will turn this pile of raw material into a water bed today. So, wish me luck. show you guys a little trick just to make you a little bit more efficient. We got 41 of these things to do. So I went ahead and stacked up, I got eight right here in a pile, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get endo on them pretty easily. Uh, it's really hard to push and pull these once you have them stacked up like this. So all you gotta do is get yourself a little beater and beat these bottom ones endo here. And then these top ones, you just slide back. All right, now you see all the ends are the same. So now I'm gonna go down to the end there because this is gonna be my drop. This is what's gonna be cut off on this side of the table and that side's gonna stay. I'm gonna keep feeding that in here to this chop saw. So I'm gonna clamp that end, that way I keep my endo as my cuts keep going. So just a little tip, make you guys a little bit faster, a little more efficient, and uh, hopefully have a little more fun in your shop. stack of flat stock kicked my ass. Uh, I shouldn't have stacked them quite that high. They were falling all over the place and a real bear to manhandle around the shop. So the second stack, I only did four high and it was a little bit more manageable and still quite a bit faster than cutting them one by one. And the last bit, which I've been waiting for the end here, is to do these 125 little tiny pieces of two and 13 16 angle. So in order to make that go a little bit faster, what I did is I went ahead and jigged up um, a little backstop here and I measured 2 and 13 sixteenths between the blade and that little piece of flat stock right there and just went ahead and threw a cowboy on it to hold it in place and now as I go through here with my double stack all I gotta do is cut, boom Slap it into that backstop right there, cut, slap it in the backstop, cut, backstop, you get the idea. But it's going to be a whole lot faster than pulling tape on this and laying it out all the way down or uh, trying to do the math and add up 2 and 13 sixteenths plus 1 eighth, which would be 2 and 15 sixteenths, and uh, laying that out all the way down to compensate for the curve of the blade. So instead, just make yourself a quick little backstop. That's partly what this is for and make sure it's just out of the way of the swing of the saw. So obviously, you know, you can't have the clamp up here like this. You're going to have problems. So a little tip, keep you guys moving and efficient and having fun here in the shop. Let's finish cutting this stuff. I'm getting tired of running this chop saw.
20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130. Got our 125 pieces here. Got 36 out of 41. We're a little bit short. I'm probably going to fabricate some out of the raw material stack behind me. Uh, got my three pieces that I needed right here. And got my two 10 foot six right here and right here. And my two five foot six right here and right here. And uh, the sheet that's going to sit inside the frame is what I've been drawing on. Let's go ahead and start tacking this thing together, pull it square, and weld it out. Yeah, not much left to do here. Finally got all the freaking pieces cut out. That took forever. I uh, should have known, man, looking at these uh, counts, especially the 41 and the 125. That really chewed up a lot of time. But doesn't mean we're going to stop. Just keep rolling. Let's get this waterbed done today. I got the frame all squared up and tacked in place so it's not going to move. I got this uh, bottom sheet here drawn up underneath and uh, tacked. Actually, it's, it's stitch welded really. Stitch welded to the bottom of this so that I don't have uh, big dips in the sheet metal once it gets filled up with water and has some steel sitting on it. And got these tubes in which are basically a spacer here. You can see just to line up these little angles that are going to end up going in there. And this is the design I was talking about where I cut these a little long so that it bows in there. And I know it's tough to tell with this uh, wide angle lens on here, but hopefully you can see that it does bow out this way, which is what I was going for. Because when the plasma comes along here, most of the time it's going to be doing a straight cut. So you see how it'll just cut maybe right here. And then it'll cut that other slat maybe down there at the end a little bit. And I uh, shouldn't have to worry about wearing these out too much. The one thing I'm not crazy about is I actually ordered this angle one inch larger than he calls for in the plans. So I thought I was going to have this slat uh, sit underneath behind here because there's instances where you actually want to submerge your material in water to keep it uh, cooled down like on stainless especially where you're trying to minimize the heat affected zone of the piece or of the cut area so what you can do is you can actually fill up this water table above these slats and have it uh, cover the material just barely that you're cutting and that'll help keep the heat down but for some reason I didn't you know do this math or figure this out ahead of time and uh, he had these designed to sit up above the table so not a huge deal. I can always just order uh, some two inch material and that'll put me a uh, half inch down below here instead of running these three inch wide 
uh, piece of flat stock for the slats. I could just switch it to two inch wide piece of flat stock and then this will sit down a little further in there and I can do my submerged arc uh, cutting. So that's the only thing so far that I'm really not crazy about. Uh, the other thing I did here is I tacked and stitch welded these in and uh, I got to make this whole thing watertight and weld it out. So now the only way for me to make this watertight because I didn't weld underneath here beforehand is to go ahead and weld all this from underneath instead of on top. So boneheaded move on my part. I really should have known better and I should have thought about it some more but I was excited and I just went for it which sometimes gets me in trouble like right now but nothing too major. I don't think it's anything out of my wheelhouse that I can't fix or work around but just a little bit of extra time that I'd rather not spend and you know you win some you lose some but I think I'm just going to end up flipping this whole waterbed over here in the shop that way you can still weld it flat because I'm not in the field anymore I don't need to weld overhead Chinese verticals with one eye hanging off the side of a building I can just flip the piece over and weld everything flat if I want to so that's pretty sweet that about wraps up day four here on the plasma table build so far I spent two days welding out this table and getting it set up to where it is and then I spent today getting this water bed figured out here. I've got it all tacked together. I've got the uh, first slot mocked up in it just to make sure that everything's going to fit there and see how it works out. There's a few things I'm not crazy about, but uh, nothing major. I think totally uh, the project's still on track to being completed and being a nice piece of equipment instead of a big pile of junk when I'm done. And that I'm pretty happy about. Well, hopefully you guys have been learning a little bit uh, about fabrication while you're watching this. I really think uh, metal fabrication is a cool skill to have and super, super useful. You can do all kinds of stuff around your house and a lot of different projects that maybe you never would have considered before. So keep watching. Check out my website, maker-table.com. And uh, check out, I'm on Facebook. Instagram is uh, TN underscore out of underscore T-E-N, 10 out of 10. Try to make that easier to remember. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And follow along, because there's going to be more to come. All right? Talk to you soon.